Hello everybody, welcome back or just welcome to the channel. My name is Ben and today we're going to be painting this German Panzergrenadier from 1944 with splinter camo. Now this is actually my first time painting uh, camo on a uniform. I think it turned out pretty okay. There were some details that I missed, but oh well. Anyways, next week I'm going to be making a vignette for it, but that's later. Let's get into it. So here's the actual figure. Um, Originally, it's from ICM, however, it was repackaged by Ravel in a Stug 4 set that I did a few weeks ago, which uh, you can go check out on the channel. Now, the details are okay, I guess. Um, however, for example, these these mag pouches, they were actually built in. And also, the, the Car 98K included in the kit wasn't very detailed, so I replaced it with this one from Tamiya. Now, the first step to sort of improving the quality of this figure is of course to scrape away the mold lines and flash uh, there was the flash was okay it wasn't too bad um, however there was there was some um, enough that it would be noticeable after painting especially after the primer phase And then, uh, you know, of course, uh, I also went back, and especially with those mag pouches, I sort of just re-scribed all the details in. Also the lacing on the tunic, um, they just weren't standing out too much, and in the end, you know, with the finished product, after painting and everything, I think it could have been a bit more, um, it could have been a bit more detailed. But, you know, that's that's sort of what you get. I'm, I, I'm not sure when exactly this, this kit was from, but... I think it was a while ago. Then with some uh, Mr. Cement S, I just clean up the, the cut lines um, because you know when you're scraping like that with your hobby knife, it can sometimes leave some weird patterns that you that you see and are very noticeable after the, the painting process. And then I of course start to actually assemble the rest of the model. Now um, I did remove the helmet just because I didn't feel like it. Uh, I felt like it would be a lot easier for painting later on, especially with the face. Um, but assembling the rest of the model really was just putting on the, uh, the Car 98K and, of course, gluing on the arm. Uh, because the, um, the kit came with a helmet, equipment, and the arm. So the, the whole body itself, including the head, was all one piece, which I'm not sure how I feel about, but oh well. And then to add some more detail to the weapon, um, I have some aluminum foil and I'm cutting out a sling. Now, I find that this is a great detail and I prefer using aluminum foil over, for example, plastic putty because you can actually, you know, change the shape even after it's done painting. The only issue I've ever had with it is that it has some issues with sticking to the actual gun as you see here. Um, thinking about it, I should use super glue because Mr. Cement S is specifically meant for plastic, but in the end I was I was managing to, to get a bomb on it, so oh well. And of course another, another slight issue is that it has trouble, uh, the paint has trouble sticking to it, but as long as you have a good primer, then that's completely okay. Speaking of primers, um, let's start to prime the model. I have a black acrylic polyurethane primer from Vallejo. Uh, I prefer black just because I prefer having my models just a tad bit darker. Um, now I was using a pretty low PSI to avoid also, you know, uh, breaking off the sling. Then moving on to some of the details, uh, first I have some white and I'm going to paint in the, the white of the eyes. Now I actually learned this technique recently, um, you know, and of course black. Um, I actually learned this technique recently that it's good to paint the eyes first and then the rest of the face because then you can control the, the shape a lot better. Now still, I'm not very good with, uh, you know, very small brushes, but um, that's just something, you know, it's just a small tip, I guess. Then for the base tone of the uh, of the flesh, I have some middle stone, red, and white. This gives sort of a nice brown beige. 
Um, and of course, like I said, this was just the base tone. And in a second, we're going to be adding some highlights and shadows. Now at this stage, you also don't really have to worry about getting any on the uniform because of course we're going to be cleaning that up later. Um, but it's best to just get it well around the, the uniform. And of course, as you can see here, around the eyes as well. Um, it surprisingly was a lot less tricky than I had imagined it would be. Um, definitely a lot easier than painting them after you've painted on the flesh tones. Then using the same tone, just with a tad bit of burnt umber, I uh, mix up a slightly, very, very slightly darker color. And with that, I paint in some of the, the shadows. So, you know, under the chin, uh, under the eyes, um, right above the eyes, like under the eyebrows as well, etc. And then using a lighter tone with some white, I paint the, the nose uh, on top of the eyebrows, the cheeks, and this just gives a slight highlight. And then mixing our original skin mixture, or flesh mixture, with also a bit of extra red, uh, we can create a slight effect for the lips. However, I did have some troubles getting the, the right proportions, so oh well. Then again with some burnt umber, uh, I paint in just a bit of facial hair. This just adds a bit of extra you know, pizzazz to the model. And of course I paint the rest of the hair in with this. Now, um, I would have preferred looking back to use a bit of a darker brown because this came out more ginger, but oh well, uh, you know, German SS was not ginger, but. Ish. Then moving on to the base of the, of the uniform, especially the tunic, I have some uh, light brown and olive green to create this sort of slightly green tinted light brown. Now, of course, like I just said, we're only painting the tunic with this um, because the, the helmet and the pants and trousers, I mean, are going to be in, uh, in field gray. And now we start to move on to the actual camouflage. So using some, some olive green and mixing that in with our previous, uh, previous you know, uniform or tunic mixture, I guess. Uh, we create a slightly darker tone and this is gonna be our green color for the, uh, for the splinter camo. Now remember, splinter camo is uh, a sharp edged camo. So I would recommend you use a pointy brush, not a rounded brush. And as you can see, it's just a matter of getting some, some natural and random looking shapes. Now when it comes to the rolled up sleeve, for example, you also have to be careful there with the creases. Then mixing actually our original flesh tone with some more red. Um, I found that this actually gave a great color for the uh, for the red, uh, the reddish brown um, on the camouflage. And again, this is just the exact same process, however, um, with our red. Now, uh, it's important to to sort of also split the camo in between like straps and everything, just to make it look like it's actually on the tunic. Then uh, using some yellow olive some gray blue and some olive green. I find that in certain ratios, this can give a pretty okay looking field gray. Um, I wouldn't know exactly which version. Uh, I think it looks sort of similar to M40, but not sure. And of course, uh, painting in the trousers with this. Um, if you have a wet palette, I would recommend actually using a wet palette for this because we're going to be using this color later on as well. So a wet palette just helps uh, avoid any waste of paint.
Then we have the helmet, and we're going to be painting this with a sort of um, dark aluminum type color, uh, just with some black and light gray. And uh, you want to give a pretty sizable coat on this. Now, on this, I actually wanted to try something new that I had seen on a post on Instagram recently. Um, basically, I have it there on a, on a stick and with some with some hairspray. I uh, I decided to try out the hairspray chipping technique. So once it has sort of a metallic or a sort of wet look sheen, um, then but it's dry to the to the touch, you know it's ready. Then I give it a coat of the um, of the field gray that we were working with earlier. Then with just some uh, some regular water. I eventually work into the paint again and slowly remove small chips. Now, in the end, I should have made the the layer of field gray a bit thinner, um, just to make the chips a bit finer as well. But you know, I didn't. Uh, so, whoops. But it was it was okay. I think lessons were learned. But generally, this is this is a pretty cool effect that definitely has potential, if you know what I mean. Now we can start to move on to the to the equipment. Now using that similar uh, that similar metallic paint that I was using earlier. Well, it wasn't metallic, but the same paint I used to paint the uh, the sort of dark aluminum slash steel type uh, type look on the helmet. I paint in the um, the gas mask canister and eventually also the the barrel of the rifle and. Uh, also small, small buckles and everything. Then using my own uh, sort of famous wood mixture, it's a medium medium brown. I uh, also paint in the the stock of my uh, of the rifle, and um, yeah, this this mixture is just mainly cheap acrylics, so it's it's pretty thick paint. But I don't know, I've I've always sort of used it, and I think I will continue using it. Then mixing that with some with a slight bit of uh, of burnt umber, just to differentiate the wood from textile, uh, we're actually going to be using that same color as a sort of orangey brown to paint in the, the textile parts on the, uh, on the water, uh, water bottle, or, I know, I know I have that wrong, but, <laughs> oops. I then paint in some of the black parts, um, by this I mean especially the black leather. So you know, the um, the mag pouches, the boots as well, um, you know, belt, all of that. And then using some burnt umber, I paint in the, the map. Uh, the map case and some other straps, especially the, the strap to hold the gas, uh, the gas mask canister. Now moving on to some of the uh, weathering, I guess. Um, I just have some black oil paint, and with some white spirit, I make a nice, uh, nice wash. 
and I sort of just dip it over these uh, over some of the details. This makes some of the details pop, and it also creates some some nice fake shadows. So generally, I quite like this effect. Now once that's dry, I uh, use some more white spirit, just plain white spirit, to remove some of the wash from areas that we don't want the wash to be, especially raised surfaces, uh, especially the, the skin. Now we're adding some actual highlights, so uh, the main two colors that I use for this are uh, olive yellow and light brown. Now the olive yellow I'm gonna I'm gonna use for the trousers. Now I use a technique called dry brushing here, so I just remove most of the paint from my paintbrush, and uh, I wait until, or I keep doing that until it leaves a very faint highlight on my paper towel, and that's when you know that it's ready. And you just dry brush over some of the creases in the areas you want highlights, and it slowly builds up some highlights. Now once I do all my highlights, uh, we come to the final, sort of final step, almost final step, which is the soft pencil technique, which uh, you know regular viewers know I love. Basically, uh, what this is, is you just have a soft pencil and go over some of the, uh, some of the metallic parts, uh, applying enough pressure that it leaves uh, some of the graphite behind, but not enough that it you know, removes the paint. Now for the actual final effect, um, I have just some some sort of dried up uh, in scale type leaves. You can use actual like knock leaves, for example. But using some PVA glue, basically what I do is I uh, I fix it onto the helmet. Now I know I probably should have added some sort of netting to the helmet before doing this, just to add some realism. However, I had no clue how to do this. So um, if any more experienced um, you know, modelers have any idea, let me know in the comments. So with that said, we are now at the end of the video. Um, this is pretty fun. I know I missed out some things, um, but I will try to improve next time. Anyways, um, if you enjoyed or learned something new, I would greatly appreciate if you liked or, you know, whatever, subscribed, even disliked if you want. Um, anything helps. Um, but in any case, thank you for clicking on the video. Now, just a quick point of info, uh, school has started again. I don't quite know what that means for my modeling stuff. Um, I think it means that I might have to cut back to doing a video once every two weeks instead of once per week. I really don't know. I'll try to figure that out, but I'll let you guys know as soon as I can. Now, if you want more uh, freaking updates on my projects, you can follow my Instagram, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a great, safe day. Farewell.